Neanderthals, extinct about 40,000 years ago, were the closest relatives of modern man. They left Africa long before the Cro-Magnons and settled almost exclusively throughout the Middle East and Europe. But our ancestors were more socialized and were better able to adapt to changes in living conditions. They destroyed or drove the Neanderthals from habitable lands. True, part of the Neanderthals, most likely, was assimilated by the Cro-Magnons. This means that in our blood, there is certain proportions of their genes. Therefore, the study of Neanderthals is important for science. The discoveries connected with them allow us to better understand the nature of some of our abilities. We encourage science lovers to actively subscribe to the Age of Dinosaurs channel as well as comment on our videos and put likes. This will allow you to be the first to know about the release of new materials and will help as many other users as possible get to our channel. Contrary to popular belief, Neanderthals rarely used natural caves as dwellings. Most of the sites of these ancient people were found near the entrances. And in the caves themselves, there were burials and other traces of activity. Perhaps some rituals were performed in such shelters, or they could serve as a temporary shelter. Maybe the legends about gnomes, trolls, kobolds, and other underground inhabitants appear during the meetings of our ancestors with the last Neanderthals. The Neanderthals themselves were short and stocky. Their average height did not exceed 165 centimeters. They also had massive foreheads and pronounced brow ridges. The chin, on the other hand, was slanted. Neanderthals wore skins, used primitive tools and weapons. There are finds of jewelry that could be of the ritual nature as well. They lived in small family groups and ate mainly meat. Near their sites, bones of large ungulates, including mammoths and woolly rhinos were found. The driven method was used to hunt such large prey. Perhaps several genera could work together for this, but it is unlikely that such associations were created for a long time. They did not have a developed speech. And without a food production technology, it did not allow for feeding of large groups in one area. In just a century and a half of research, more than 500 burials were discovered. Many of them were massive and contained the remains of several dozen people. Some of the skeletons have been preserved in excellent condition and allowed scientists to find out previously unknown details of the life of Neanderthals. There is no point in describing each of these finds. We will try to highlight the most interesting of them all and talk about the most important stages in the study of Neanderthals. The first known finds related to Neanderthals were explored in the first half of the 19th century, but these bones were identified as Neanderthal much later. The name of the previously unknown human species was given by a find made in 1856 in the Neanderthal Gorge in Germany. The fragments of bones found here and the skull covered for several years became the subject of fierce disputes between scientists. Only in 1863, at a meeting of the British Association for the Advancement of Science, it was proclaimed that these bones belonged to a separate species of ancient people. Later, it turned out that similar finds had already taken place. So, the skull discovered in 1848 in Gibraltar did not attract the attention of the scientific community. The German scientist Rudolf Urkow considered differences in structure to be signs of rickets. It was possible to prove that these differences are not individual, but racial, which also later turned out to be incorrect. Only in 1864, after the discovery of a skull from a Neanderthal, a detailed description of the Gibraltar specimen was not made until 1907. An even earlier find, a child's skull, found in Belgium in 1830, was attributed to Neanderthal only a hundred years after discovery. In the same place in Belgium, during excavations of the Spee Cave in 1886, the skeletons of a man and a woman were found. But it was not the bones themselves that turned out to be more important for science, but the fact 
that Neanderthal tools were found next to them. This discovery was the next step in the recognition of Neanderthals as a separate species of people. But at the same time, the researchers made a mistake in describing the structure of the limbs. They considered that Neanderthals constantly moved on half-bent legs. Such conclusions of scientists for a long time fixed the image of primitive cavemen for Neanderthals. In 1901, the German anthropologist Gustav Schwab substantiated the theory that Neanderthals are an independent species of man. Before that, it was believed that they are a separate extinct race of Homo sapiens. Also at the end of the 19th century, the hypothesis that Neanderthals were an intermediate link between Pithecanthropes and modern humans became widespread. In his later work, Schwab also considers another option, that Neanderthals were a dead-end branch of development related to modern people. This theory was also supported by the French scientist Marcelin Boulle. In the years 1911 through 1913, in the annual edition of the Annals of Paleontology, his work is published under the title, Fossil Man from La Chapeau a Scene. After that, for several generations of scientists, the Neanderthal became a primitive troglotype, with a stooped back, a crooked neck, and head tilted forward, and half-bent knees. The author of the theory of the settlement of America through a land bridge on the site of the Bering Strait, the American scientist Alesh Hidrikla, was a supporter of the opposite version. In his speech of the occasion of the award of the Huxley Medal to him in 1927, he speaks of the direct descendant of modern humans from Neanderthals. Also, an opponent of Boulle's theory was the Frenchman Camille Arenberg. In 1955, this anthropologist took an X-ray of his spine. Based on it, he proved that the stoop of Neanderthals is a consequence of osteoarthritis, in healthy individuals, such signs of similarity with monkeys are not observed. Also, anthropologist Carlton Kuhn, in his book The Origin of Races, published in 1962, suggested that many of the features characteristic of Neanderthals were the result of life and the harsh European climate of the Ice Age. Also in the late 70s of the last century, several studies of Neanderthal skulls were published. Comparison with finds from Africa and Southeast Asia showed that Neanderthals did not live in these territories, and the bones and skulls found there belonged to other types of ancient people. With the advent of new research methods, more detailed data about the life and origin of Neanderthals became available to scientists. In 1991, carbon analysis was used to study the diet of groups living in different areas. In 1997, a group of German scientists was able to extract a section of mitochondrial DNA from the bones of Neanderthals. This section was compared with a similar section of modern human DNA. In 2008, the mitochondrial DNA of Neanderthals was completely deciphered, and in 2010, scientists also read their nuclear DNA. Among the latest discoveries related to Neanderthals, the following studies deserve special attention. A strong bite. There was an opinion that the characteristics facing with the high cheekbones helped Neanderthals bite harder. Some researchers even suggested that they help themselves with their teeth when carrying things or other operations. But the reconstruction of their jaws has shown that they are far superior in bite force compared to the more elegant jaws of modern humans. Wide Noses It is assumed that the wider nose was a result of living in cold climates. This shape of the nostrils allowed you to warm the inhaled air more efficiently. Scientists also suggest that the massive bodies of Neanderthals needed more oxygen. Wide nostrils provided them with almost 30% increase compared to Cro-Magnons. Slow Development A study of the skeleton of a seven-year-old Neanderthal boy led scientists to the following conclusion. Neanderthal children develop more slowly than sapien children. Although he was no different in height from a modern seven-year-old child, 
his brain volume was only 87.5% of that of an adult. For modern people, this figure is 95%. Also, in this child, not all vertebrae was fused. In modern children, this process ends by four to six years. Ability for fine work. Scientists compared the hands of representatives of various modern professions with the hands of the ancient Cro-Magnons and Neanderthals. It turned out that half of the Cro-Magnons had signs of people doing fine work. At the same time, such signs were found in all studied Neanderthals. Flu protection. On average, the genome of each inhabitant of the Earth contains about 2% of the genes inherited from Neanderthals or our common ancestors. But recent studies have shown that it is in the DNA of the Neanderthal that there is a protective mechanism against influenza viruses. Scientists have suggested that the Neanderthals who settled Europe before the Cro-Magnons were able to develop immunity to this disease and passed it on through common descendants. It is possible that without this protection, our ancestors would have simply died out, unable to adapt to the virus. A similar situation arose with the genes that protect against hepatitis C. Perhaps our ancestors inherited many other abilities from their extinct relatives, but even this knowledge of Neanderthals tells us that without them, the history of mankind could have taken a very different path. We thank the viewers who watched this video to the end. For those who are interested in the topic of this video, we recommend that you watch other issues dedicated to the history of the development of our species.